Hi there, Yuri, and welcome to the Generation Nation. Hello, Johnny. Nice to meet you. Well, a pleasure to meet you. Now, Yuri, a question we ask all of our guests when they first come on the show is, who are you and why should we listen to you and, and listen to you talking about Woodpecker? Uh, well, my name is Yuri Veremchuk, uh, and the reason why probably you, you can't listen to me is that I've been doing cold emailing for five years now. Yeah, it all started with a student organization. You know, at the age of 19, uh, I was in a college and I was an active member of student organization. And we had to find some sponsors to make our projects look cooler, you know. And if we wanted to do that, we had to get creative. So I've started cold calling people. You know, it actually didn't work out that much because it was demotivating calling people. They're all hanging out on you. Uh, so I've decided to switch to cold emailing. It was much more effective, uh, you know, and, and I started to like this kind of sales process, you know, people reaching out to people, making sponsors for our project, the feeling of, you know, the, the making sales. And I really liked it. So then I decided to kind of combine my two passions. So I've started for ways to look at how I can make money out of sales because I liked it. And there was an opportunity to join the company, uh, the Woodpecker company at the beginning of their growth. Mm, my friend of mine, the friend of mine sent me the the proposition, like, you know, the link on, on the internet, like saying, hey, this is a cool company. I know that you're looking for a job right now. Maybe try to apply. So I've did, I've tried to apply. And the funny story is the friend that sent me that link was also trying to apply and he didn't get the job. And by coincidence, <laughs> I, I got it. So, well, so, sorry, Vlad, I'm saying that once again. <laughs> yeah. And uh, from that on, my journey with sales started, uh, and since then it's been three years and three amazing years. You know, the journey from the junior sales rep to the head of outbound sales, you know, seeing that growth uh, of, you know, from 100 clients to 3,000 clients, it, it's just something special, and I'm really grateful for that. And that is fantastic. The rest is history. So at this point, Yuri, it'd be very helpful to tell our audience what exactly Woodpecker is. What is the tool? And more importantly, yeah. why is Woodpecker so good for B2B lead generation? Well, you know, the tool is just a tool. It's a tool that allows you to be more independent, not to rely on any other external service. Um, the reason why it's so effective, Johnny, my kind of thought on that is that it all depends on your effort. So whether you are proactive and you are doing that systematically, you will get an effort. You'll get a result. So it all depends on you. you. You get the chance to work independently and reach out to your potential clients. So that's kind of my feeling why it's uh, effective. And to clarify further, Woodpecker is what exactly? Is it a database tool? Is it an email sending platform? Can you speak exactly a bit more on what it is? Woodpecker is a tool that allows you to automate the part of B2B sales process, actually the essential part of it, the reach out, the content. So we automate the first emails, the follow-ups that you send to your potential clients, and make sure that you get delivered those emails into the inbox, not into spam. Brilliant. So that's a really useful tool because you think about many of the people who listen to this, they rely on cold email. Deliverability yeah. is key. Being able to send a cadence of messages, not just one, but two, but three, all are key to generating leads. When it comes to using Woodpecker and looking at your customers, what are some of the use cases or scenarios that work best for Woodpecker? What sorts of people or industries or roles really enjoy using Woodpecker for B2B lead generation? Well, Johnny, there are many of them. Counting each would take just a long time. Let me say that any company that's trying to look for a way to be more independent in their sales process, that are trying to change their sales process, size from anywhere from one to, I don't know, 100, 51, 200 size, uh, is probably could, could use Woodpecker effectively. It all depends on the goals that they are trying to achieve. You know, we all have a different uh, clients that we are trying to reach out. Businesses differ. So as, as long as we know to whom we are reaching out, as long as we build the process of reach out, Woodpecker can help you with that. So then maybe, Yuri, because you do have such a vast array of customers, you say around 3,000 now, maybe it, I should ask you, what's been your biggest or most interesting client success? What are you hearing from your customers when they say how good Woodpecker is? Well, actually, there's one story that I'm really happy to come back to. 
there was a one lead generation agency, and it's business something that is familiar to you, um, that joined the Woodpecker with one account. They've just tried to, to see what's the, what this tool is about, how they can use it in their daily services. And uh, since then on, they've built to 10, 20, 30, 50. And I'm saying, but adding accounts that the companies they were providing the services to. And at the end, they are like have 100 accounts in Woodpecker, meaning that's close to somewhere like to 90 clients that they're doing the services for. And uh, thinking about it in that way that seeing the growth of such a company from one account, from one client since the beginning till they're becoming a really big agency uh, and knowing that we had like a tiniest part, uh, we played a tiniest part in it, it really makes me happy. So this lead gen agency, they used Woodpecker to power their cold email and their outbound outreach, yes. right? Yes. So, so then many people listen to this, cold email is their primary strategy for generating leads, to which my question to you is, and it's a very broad question and we could probably go down a rabbit hole, is what are some best practices when it comes to cold email? There's so much involved in it, but um, let's get started on it. When you meet someone for the first time, how can they best use woodpecker and what are some best practices well as you said johnny it's a really really big topic it's it's a lot of a lot of things to talk about first let, let me say let me let me tell you this that the quality is the key for everything i would say if you're trying to do something try to be the best at it so if you're trying to reach out to people try to contact them Make sure that you are, you know, who is your ideal customer profile. You know, who are you reaching out to? You know, where they, you, you can find them. You know, what language they speak. You know, because for me, reaching out to banking industry and startups within IT is a totally different language. So just make sure that you're prepared. You, you did your homework. You've personalized. Uh, you, you actually, you just did your homework. Mm, that's for sure a thing to do. The second most important thing is, from my experience is just systematically do the process. You know, you, you have to systematically find those people. You have to systematically get the feedback to improve the ideal customer profile, to improve your emails systematically because things that work today might not work tomorrow because a lot of people are using that and people have just been tired of that. So that, that's something also valuable and also important to focus on. A technical side of it. Not a lot of people mention that, uh, but you have to really know where, at what ground are you standing. So whether your emails get delivered at all, because some people might start sending emails without knowing if they have a good reputation of their domains, and it, it's a straightaway a killer. You, you won't be able to deliver, like they won't, the recipient won't be able to read your email. So make sure, it's actually a good practice is to set up a different domain for outreach than doing like from your own. With like, for example, your website is uh, somethingabc.com that maybe reach out from getabc.com. That's an example. It's always better to have a like, second protection just in case. Um, and also, let me tell you about things not to do. Uh, it's, it's maybe not a good practice to, you know, to gather 200 people at one like outreach prepare a very long email that talks only about you and yourself. You don't, you don't even mention the, the, like you, the things, the pains that you can help with the company. And uh, you send them, right? You send it straight away and straight away you expect the result. It, it's not a good thing to do. So um, this, is, this is what comes from my experience so far. Yuri, that was fantastic. You mentioned a lot of things in there, which I'm going to ask you a bit more. You spoke there about making sure you have the right domain reputation. You spoke about tactics such as using uh, sending emails from another domain. You spoke about not writing long emails with long sales copy, which only speaks about yourself and not the pains of the buyer. You also touched upon the importance of knowing your buyer, getting the right buyer persona. Lots in there. Let's drill down. Can you explain to our audience, many of whom might be hearing about this for the first time, what domain sender reputation is? Many people think they can send out cold emails. That's fine. But they don't understand the importance of having high deliverability and domain reputation. Can you explain that concept simply to the audience? Yes. In simple words, it's just how servers see our domain, whether the services, service providers like Gmail, Outlook, how they see your email when you send, um, for example, a message to the owner of an Outlook address or, or a Gmail address. 
So there are a lot of technical things that are considered into your scores, like, you know, for example, what words are you using, the quantities of emails you're using, the, maybe the attachments that you're using, how long the email has been existing, how long the domain existed, what usually were, like, what the email addresses, what people, whether the email addresses existed at all, like, if you got some delivers, uh, invalids, maybe you've bounced a lot. It's a lot of things considered in that stuff, but in simple words, it's just how servers perceive us. And it's really important to, to, to know on what ground you stand because you might do the best job in preparing the email. You might do the best job in looking for the right people to contact. You might find the right time to contact, but if, you, if your email doesn't get delivered, well, tough love. Brutal, Yuri, but very true. What um you mentioned there that there are certain words that sometimes get people's emails sort of caught in the spam trap. What are some words that B2B lead generators should avoid if they're starting a cold email campaign? Are there certain hot words or keywords that you have noticed? I know it differs from industry that you could suggest people stay away from. Uh, definitely. is the most used words uh, on the internet. And there are actually tons of articles talking about the words, the spam words used in emails. And for example, one of those spam words is actually was surprising to me was unsubscribe. Uh, it's, it was, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of services of newsletters use that word. But if you use it in your own email and send it for an every recipient, well, you you will be you'll be counted as a suspicious sender. <laughs> that that was that was something very weird to me. Uh, definitely a lot of uh, a lot of numbers, uh, including a lot of numbers into the email, and including those uh, kind of words that are not used on a daily basis, which are kind of restricted words. Uh, let's say like a, in a bad language, uh, also is not a bad is not is not a good practice uh, to do. Well, yeah, this is this is what my experience tells me. That's fine. Another question is, is how do how have you found email servers treat hyperlinks? For example, is there any best practices on how many hyperlinks you should have in a body of text? Is it as many as you like or fewer the better? Should the hyperlinks be cloaked as in the word should be hyperlinked or can you drop the URL in in full? What is some yeah. practices around, you know, hyperlinking in, in emails? That's a good question, Johnny. Actually, it's, you have to be really careful with that. Um, including hyperlinking every word is not a good practice. Well, services might consider you as a spammer, as we usually, when we receive a first message from the person that we haven't been contacting in our life, and it's the link saying click here. Well, it's kind of how Trojans and those viruses are being spread in the internet. Well, that's also deliver, that's also like scales down our reputation of our domain. Uh, the, pra the best practice for it, for it is actually this, that you send uh, a hyperlink which has not been tracked. So there, is, there are options to track your links, how many clicks there have been, um, and the proposition from my side. If it's really important to you and you know that you can risk for the reputation of your domain, yes, please do that. But if you want to protect yourself, make sure that your email, email gets delivered as much as possible try to just include one link per email, not to every recipient, and don't track it. And don't hyperlink like really long sentences, just hyperlink maybe one word, or it's better even to just include the link into the email, not hyperlink it. Interesting, interesting. With something you said earlier, Yuri, was that when doing an outbound email campaign, sometimes it's best to not even use your proper company domain, but to get an alternative. Can you explain a bit more about how someone might do that? So the easiest thing for that is to see what's your main company domain. Prepare three to four examples of really similar company domains available and check them out if they are available. And uh, you can go to GoDaddy, check it out over there. Um, and then warm it up as you register for the second domain, warm it up for at least a month of sending different emails which have a different copies inside of it. Best, best it's to manually put the text in, not just copy paste it. Send it, for example, for the first week for two to three emails a day. Then scale it up the next week to six to five, then scale it up to 10. I know it's a long process. Nobody really got, got time for that, but 
if you want to make sure that your domain is not counted as a suspicious and you don't just burn your domain out after you just bought it, it's better to take a slower but focus on the quality. And then after like a month or something of warming up the domain, uh, you are free to send on the larger quantities, like 30 emails per day, and then just scale it up for your needs. The reason for that is simple. You know, even though if we make sure that we find the emails that are in, that are valid, that we know who are we reaching out to, sometimes there might be some situations where we get bounced from the email box of the recipient. For example, there are situations that you can receive a bounce for um, the email box of the recipient is full and it was not your fault. You did a good job. You did a good research, but well, tough love, it was bound, you got bounced. Now your reputation is slightly lower. So in those kind of situations, you don't want to risk on the higher, um, in the long term, you don't want to make such a higher risk because as your company grows and you're getting more clients, well, in some position, you might find yourself that the reputation of your woodpecker, for example, .co domain is not the best one. And well, you have already established brand. And now what to do with that? It's always better to protect the downside rather than just scale it out from the first day out. Of course, of course. Now, Yuri, Woodpecker, what does the future hold for the Woodpecker platform in 2019? So you're fundamentally a technology company. Yes. Building tools which help people do better cold and outbound campaigns. What what's what's on the product roadmap? Are there more integrations or more use cases? What are you, what where is the technology going? And why should B two B lead generators be excited about using Woodpecker this year? Well, we, what we try to do is actually to talk to people that use Woodpecker and get the feedback. How do they feel about Woodpecker? What's missing? What's good? Did they like the user experience of it? So out of those conversations and also counting from our experience, because we're also using Woodpecker for our needs in outbound sales, we are definitely going to focus more on the drip campaigns right now. As this feature, the, the philosophy of Woodpecker is simple. We try to focus on quality rather than on quantity. And some tools you can find, uh, the tool has been existing for a year and it's already packed with features. The question is whether it works properly. Woodpecker is a totally different story. We've been trying to make sure that our features work properly. We deliver a quality process, even though maybe it takes a little bit slower, uh, a little bit longer. So when it comes to the features, right now we're building out with the drip campaigns, whether the possibility of you to send different emails depending on the responses of people. So for example, if the person has replied to your email with a positive, positive response, you will send one follow-up. If the person replied with a negative response, you'll be able to send another follow-up and set it up not when you receive the response, but at the beginning of the creation of the, of the campaign. And that's the first feature. The second one is actually the one that I'm getting really excited about. Uh, it's the social media presence. Because we all know that email platform is not the only platform used for sales. Some people still use phones. Some people are present, and actually a lot of people are present on social media. We're trying to integrate with a lot of social media, trying to look for the way of building in the phone option so you can operate your sales process uh, from the inside of Woodpecker, set up a specific stages, for example, in the day one, you send an email, day of three, you do a kind of social media activity, day five, you get a reminder about a phone call and you make a call. Also, video prospecting is a nice thing right now. Videos are being uh, used a lot. Uh, I actually myself like it, but I like it when it's done correctly and it's prepared not, not like, oh, I'm just going to send a video, but it's prepared nicely. And I see the person, I see the emotions, uh, I see kind of relationship building from the first. And we try to also integrate the videos inside of the tool uh, the best as we can. So we would be willing to use it. Interesting. So a very exciting year ahead on the product roadmap for Woodpecker. Well, Yuri, thank you for your time with us today. We're coming towards you, the Johnny. end of this conversation. Where can people go to learn more about Woodpecker? What website and how can they reach out to you if you want? they want to continue the conversation with you, Yuri? Well, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, it's Yuri Varemchuk. You can find me. You can reach out to my direct email address. It's Yuri at woodpecker.com. Uh, the best way to learn about Woodpecker is actually check out our blog. As I said, we focus on quality and we try to deliver the best quality content, what we see on our, like based on our activities that we do. 
and try to share it with the world. So there you can find a lot of articles on how to prepare your first email, how to set up a domain, how to prospect finally. And I would say that's the best platform to learn about Woodpecker. Well, Yuri, thank you for joining us on Lead Generation Nation. Thank you, Johnny. It was a pleasure to talk to you.